government's effort to combat the rising tide of mobile money fraud requiring users to compulsorily link their SIM cards to the Ghana cards was hailed as a move to keep fraud-linked activities that had become a growing concern in the mobile money sector. It was expected that tying each SIM card to a verified identity could thwart fraud-linked activities, protect users and maintain the integrity of financial transactions. In the following feature, Michael Ashali reports that the Momo Frosters continue to prey on the unsuspecting public. Mobile money fraud has now become so pervasive. The motive is varied, but the bottom line is to get money from you. These deceptive schemes often commence with a seemingly ordinary text message, characterized by glaring grammatical errors. Spelling errors and poor construction in fraudulent messages might just be a deliberate strategy employed by cyber criminals. When you see the bad spelling, it is not as if they can't smell. Dr. Kenneth Ashigbe, the chief executive officer of the Ghana Chamber of Telecommunications, suggests that the use of poor grammatical constructions by the frosters is just an attempt to circumvent their new artificial intelligence enabled system. They confirm maybe the R that is there, they will make it an S. They will change a few of the things in there so that once the AI is crawling it, he sees it, it's not what it is that he's looking for. So, but fortunately for us now, we're beginning to use AIs. So what the AIs do is that once they see all of this, they learn. So they start seeing the spelling mistakes that you want to beat them. Other times, these fosters will call you with promises to lure you to send them money. Oh, Anoche was almost scammed weeks ago. He now knows the plot of these fosters very well. No, they will just call you like normal call, and then he will say hello. So he will not even ask your name first. No, he will just say, it is me, your auntie, who is in London. And then personally, I don't have any auntie in London. So I just say, who, 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 which of my aunties in London? He said, oh, have you forgotten? Then you mentioned some name. So I just said, no, no, I don't have any auntie in London. So. As unsuspecting individuals continue to fall victims to various schemes, the tactics employed by these fraudsters continue to evolve. Someone will just call you and be like, uh, when will I receive the money? Uh, uh, please, I've sent you this money. Can you confirm? And several calls of that, several calls. They were asking me, when am I paying my debt? So I asked, with debt? And then he said, said the debt I was owing him. If the way he, the person responded again and spoke with me again, I realized eh, it was one of these frosters. Like I deposit 1,000 CDs into my accounts. And the person was calling me, I sent 250,000 CDs into my account. So they have sent 250,000 CDs to your account? To my account. I should withdraw it back to him. Then I went back to check my account and I noticed that, nah, it was a lie. And I bust up him by giving, me, by giving some sense into his head. Rose and Nukwe have been victims of cyber fraud. And when they called me, they said they've sent me some amount of 400 setters. So I should check by dialing my PIN. So then I was very curious. My brother asked me not to do it, but I told him, being a good Samaritan, I, but I didn't know that maybe it's true or it's not true. But the moment I just dialed my PIN code, they just took the money. And later on, I called them to beg them that, please, the money was for something important. They should send the money back to me. But they refused. And I called MTN. MTN told me they would get back to me, but nothing. The string number called me, then he was like, he sent me money, so I should check my account. But after that time, I didn't receive the, I didn't receive the money. So some few minutes later, the message came from MTN. Like, it was MTN, like if you see money blah, 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 from MTN. But it was coming from a to-go line. So what I was just suspicious, so like, how will I... The person introduced himself as a worker from a, from a telecom company. Yes, that he works as MTN and he sent the money to me. Then, all right, the, the message came all right as MTN, but it was coming from a to-go line. So I still read the message. I realized that there were spelling mistakes and all that from it. So I realized that he called again, that he sent me the money. Have I checked my account? I should check my account that instantly. And I was like, no, 
the message we sent was even wrong, and this is not how messages appear from MTN and all that. Then he was pressuring me. Then I should just check my account number. And I was like, no, there's no way I'm checking my account because of that. He got bored. They started insulting me. I just hung up. Mobile money operators are not even spared. They will tell you that uh, they want to uh, check. They want to help you with some difficulties that you are facing in the business. For me, they've been calling. But me, the moment you said I'm from MCN, I'll just end the call. I don't listen because MCN has only one number. The modus operandi has, however, evolved over the years. You know, like Tiyo Achebu would say, when the hunter learns to shoot without missing, the birds learn to fly without perching. Now, they pose as agents of some of the mobile networks under the guise that you were a lucky winner of a draw. I'm Linda Ofori. Our calls are recorded for education and training purposes. So for detailed understanding, are you okay with the English or should I speak to you in any local language? Oh, but you are already communicating in English, thank you. We are 28 years. Could you remember the number of years you've also been on a network with this very particular mobile number? I think about 15 or so. Okay, so you are very close. I'm going to remind you of um, the year you registered the SIM card. So, MC, we thank you very much. We were asking all these questions to actually survey the network to know how good or bad it's performing. From enticing phone calls promising rewards to posing as mobile network agents, the aim of the scammers is simple extract your personal information and use them to later impersonate you. So we have um, a very nice package for you. And please, with the prizes we have for you, you have to visit the nearest MTN branch with your valid ID card, that is your Ghana card, to receive your package successfully. So first of all, MTN is giving you 50 cents airtime for free. You can use this airtime for both local and international calls. Secondly, you're also receiving a 2 gigabyte data bundle. It, it has no expiry. And finally, Hisense Company Limited. So Hisense is giving you a 2.0 horsepower air conditioning gadget. So please, um, I would like to confirm your AC numbers. Please, what are your AC numbers over there? What number? Haven't you received any AC number? Your AC code, please. That is six numbers, please. Okay. But, okay, is that I shall tell you what it is. We we are verifying it for you, please, so that I can bring you to the office, please. With your Ghana card, that is all, please. But the message says, do not share. Oh, yes, please. We said, with we said, hello, we said, the message is that you see yellow MTNA. Do not share this code with any MTN employee or anyone, okay? So we are giving reference to that. After verifying for you, no one from MTN will call you again unless you come to the office. And then this will be the message you will disclose to the, re the representative who is going to assist you. About it is that there are basic things. Some red flag. One of the red flags is that you want something. Red flag. Immediately somebody tells you one. It's a red flag. And that one about I have sent you some number. Ah, another red flag. Some victims, despite their efforts to report incidents of fraud, find themselves faced with a frustrating silence from telecom companies. Complaints lodged against fraudulent activities often go unanswered, leaving victims without the resolution they seek. No, I didn't hear anything. I didn't. The moment, the moment someone calls me like that and I suspect the person to be a foster, after reporting them to MTN, I block them. Sometimes if you encounter um, a problem of that sort, I mean, it is difficult to reach out to MTN. Sometimes you can call them for some few minutes. I mean, long minutes. They will not even pick. So, looking at the stress you go through, you just say, okay, since they did not able to take anything from me, uh, let me end it there. No, they only said I should call in 24 hours. And within that 24 hours, I called again. They said they can't do anything about it. And I got angry and hung up the call. To care this, government has since 2022 made it compulsory for every SIM card user to link it to their Ghana card for one major reason. By tying each SIM card to a verified identity, government sought to create a system that could thwart fraudulent activities, protect users and maintain the integrity of financial transactions. The need for re-registration of SIM cards is obvious. There's a lot of cyber crimes that are committed by people on 
um, our networks with our mobile money system there's a lot of impersonation identity theft out there so for security reasons it is imperative that we register our sim cards people of all ages endured days of frustrating queues to obtain their ghana card the mandatory document for the sim card re-registration exercise today is my fifth time now i was here today during my life day i came i don't know what is going to happen to me today so today if we did it i didn't get it today that i, I, I think I'll, I'll, they will send me to 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 military barracks. subsequently they faced further frustration spending additional hours in another line to link their sim cards to the acquired ghana card i believe if they can do something about it because there are there are a lot of people behind me however despite the well-intentioned move the cyber criminals are undeterred it appears with each step taken by government the scammers employ various schemes to outwit unsuspecting victims and exploit weaknesses in the system they found ways so now what happens generally some of the new ways that you know you, know, you and i are entitled to 10 numbers that we can register a maximum so they will see a few of our friends who do not really understand what these things mean give them some 20 cds and then they'll go with them and they'll go and register the sims in their names some sim card subscribers believe that some employees within the telecom companies collude with frosters sharing the personal information of their subscribers this shared information they believe is then exploited against the unsuspecting subscriber i think there are some people in the office in the mcn office that works with those scammers but sometimes how they even get your number and everything is strange most of the same cards in ghana is registered with ghana card so if you report it should be easy to find those people do you think the systems in ghana can do that <laughs> even when you report and they trace they won't end up seeing anybody or they end up arresting anybody so sometimes you just have to be vigilant and then be, be careful about it. dr ashibe however says that telecommunication companies are exploring other novel means to sanitize the space because another thing that we've done is that on the as a chamber we have what we call the fraud control dashboard so when things like this happen and it's reported the first thing is that the mno to whom it's reported would investigate it when they establish that fraud has been perpetuated what they then would do is that they would then go and block that person's number the id the, uh, the phone number would be blocked when the phone number is blocked they then go by and then every phone has an imsdi number and a unique number to a phone though some of the clone numbers uh, phones you know can clone it so they will block the device as well so what will happen is that if i use this to do it then this device will be blocked i can't use it anymore but then they will then report it on the fcd so if it's uh, operator A, you report it on FCD, then the other uh, two operators as well would also block that device. So what it would mean that that device cannot be used in Ghana again. Then if that particular ID behind it has been used in perpetuating multiple fraud, then we would go back again and then block the ID. So once they blacklist the ID, you can't use the ID to register any uh, SIM again. Despite the initial challenges posed by mobile money fraud, telecom companies maintain the belief that integrating the Ghana cards with SIM cards will ultimately prove instrumental in eliminating fraudulent activities. Subscribers earnestly hope for a more robust and responsive telecom service when addressing their content related to mobile money, particularly in handling and resolving complaints. For Joy News, Michael Ashale. Well, I've been joined by Henry Kobler, his team lead of ISOLVE Africa. Grateful for your time for this conversation. I mean, linking our cards uh, was supposed to be an ideal solution to all these problems. What happened? Because we're still here. Thank you very much. Um, so I must say that generally when it comes down to systems, I mean, telecommunication systems, I mean, linking up with the at, um, generally, I feel that it's a process um, and sort of would basically take some level of time. I've seen policymakers pushing some level of effort in 
making sure that that process had gone through. We've had a lot of back and forth into it. But generally, when it gets down to tech, um, tech processes itself, it basically takes a bit of time um, in, in the point of um, implementation. And so, um, yes, we've looked at the cards coming into play, which is a very good thing. In <coughs> processes that is available uh, and then being able to link up with the cards which is in the systems. I am seeing um, some level of effort being made by the telecommunication networks to I mean, curb some of these issues but generally I feel that there's a bigger problem on our hands where we're seeing that there's quite a lot of these complaints coming. Um, users do not sometimes even know where to place these complaints to and the results coming in in place for you. Um, I have had quite a lot of people I mean, getting on to some of these scams, the scams keep evolving. Um, some of these scams looks like it's an insider processes. And um, it's really hard to even hear news about some of these um, arrests being made in, in terms of connecting to some of these frauds. And so it gives users that point where sometimes when they get to be before that, they do not even sometimes go ahead to go through the processes of calling the telephone. <coughs> All of that and that becomes a bigger problem because when you're having the citizenry not able to or having knowledge and understanding the processes of reporting some of these um, scams and, and getting some level of results assuring results it becomes a bigger problem for us in the system then sorry a question again what will it take to clean the system of i mean these fraudsters who will be calling and seeking to get your information and also to use it for fraudulent activities? I think number one, the very first process is to sort of have a dedicated call center where some of these fraudulent activities are sort of reported in real time and in, in the quickest of time and some level of actions are taken in, in, in that time frame. Um, having that dedicated, I mean, connection or, or I mean, call center to to give the citizens some level of um, assurance that they could always call is the very first process of cleaning the system because they know and it's actually placed out there. There's a lot of education on it that gives people to understand that if you're further, the next number that you're calling is as if you're calling a fire service or otherwise, because financial fraud is becoming a bit of challenge. Mobile money is becoming one of the most used transactional points in Ghana. So we should sort of treat it as um, a major hurdle. This is not really just to the telecos. There are quite a lot of fraudulent activities that are coming on to I mean, the banking systems, ATM systems, card systems, I mean, quite a lot of them. And so when we're having dedicated centers, which is dedicated to telecom fraud or mobile money fraud, I think that becomes a bit of, of good ones. Um, number two, I think that some level of publications in terms of the 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 the, the um, the people that are into this fraud could actually also raise some level of alarm because when we're seeing people's faces to this crime and there's some level of effort in arresting them and prosecuting them in, in that fast track manner, I think that it helps in um, sanitizing the processes. I am predicting that in the next five years, we're going to have a heightened um, a bit of fraud in, 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 in the telecommunication system and in the IT system itself. As, as a whole. And so um, there's that high need of a lot of trains um, by most of these telecos and banking systems to be looking into cybersecurity um, trainings for most of their, their employers. Um, and even the people that they sort of interact with, most of the merchants that they sort of um, link up to, there's supposed to be a lot of education and trainings which will go into helping the, these employers to be able to get ahead of time and to be able to keep some of these menace which is in there. Um, and then the next thing I think should be, should be coming in place is the linking of almost all the systems. I feel that there's quite a lot of disintegration when it comes down to the systems. And so if you want to track someone um, whose who's Ghana card or whose SIM card has been used in fraud and um, you track it to the Ghana card, the Ghana card basically should be looking up to a GPS system. And so that makes location easy to track and all of those things. There should be that centralization and um, syncing of these systems, which makes it easy. Um, that should even connect to all the um, banking systems, which I know is in place, but uh, but there's a bit of slow processes to the way which I understand it comes with tech. 
but there should be that communication across border. If somebody is moving money, the next persons that they are even moving money to from those SIM cards are actually being blocked. And so it's not just about the person that um, is, is in the crime, but the perpetrators are around the crime. Because when money hits onto that SIM card, it's moved onto several SIM cards. And by tracking those SIM cards, you can be able to now put the money and then now get to the, the persons. I think that these processes could come in place. Um, some level of policy heightened who come in. I've seen that there were taxes that were placed on to help um, improve cybersecurity. I've not seen the implementation of that. I've seen cybersecurity agencies and the Ghana Police Service come into play. Um, I think that there should be more of work to be done in, in that sector and some level of persecutions that can come in. I mean, um, even if you're having dedicated, I mean, court systems which are coming in place to curb financial fraud, I think that a lot of people would actually put themselves in place. There are quite a lot of things which is going on. Um, for an example, you're having Ghana being called out of PayPal just because you're having quite a lot of Nigerians coming to Ghana to commit, I mean, fraud on, on that level. Like, so you're having your country taking out. That's a big issue. And for me, I, I think that the cuts are cost, not just mobile money, but the banking systems, any financial systems, the fintech systems that are all around, there should be that heightened level of cybersecurity alertedness that could come into place for us. Henry Cobla, I'm grateful for your time. He's lead team, team lead of uh, iSolve Africa. Grateful that you're able to join us for this conversation. We can have